Hello, I'm Mario Taniguzzi, Senior News Editor with Retail Insider. Joining me today is Kelly Keene, who is founder of Money Wise Workplaces. Thanks for joining us today, Kelly. Great to be back with you, Mario. All right, we're going to talk about a, a recent report, Future of Commerce, put out by Square that looked at a couple of things like AI and automation. Now, let me just first ask you about the AI revolution. Uh, you know, what influence or what impact is that having on industries like retail and restaurants, uh, those types of industries right now? Yeah, first, Mario, I mean, great question. Great to be uh, back with you. I would just kind of back up to put a little bit of context to say that you and I have spoken a lot and businesses are the heartbeat of our economy. We love to support them. And, you know, as they can innovate and as they can automate, they can maybe pass those cost savings to us or hold prices um, more steady or just make the experience more fun and save us time. Who doesn't want more of that? So this Future of Commerce report from Square, it's a really great news story in the sense that, you know, businesses, as we all know, have been in survival mode for so long and they're looking to growth mode. So 100% of restaurants in this report said that they were looking to expand in 2024. 61% uh, of retail were looking to expand. So to answer your question about AI, how does that look? What could that be? I mean, it could be everything from, you know, robot supports in the kitchen to uh, just, you know, processing reservations um, to food prep. So, so many different um, ways that that can be used. And uh, Mario, you know, when it comes to automation, I, I find that it's really interesting that this report reveals that 19 months out of the year, restaurants are actually facing staffing shortages. So that's definitely where, you know, this can be a real support if it's AI or it's automation, if it's here now or it's coming soon, uh, you know, trying to fill a lot of those gaps for restaurants and us as consumers of those lovely establishments that we want to see flourish for the new year. Okay, let me just uh, ask this question from two different aspects and two different angles. Uh, you know, the the push in technology towards automation, towards AI, uh, all that, uh, how does that benefit and where does it benefit the actual business owners? Yeah, well, I mean, think about how far we've come. Like, you know, there used to be the day we had to sit on the phone on hold as a consumer to try to make a reservation. Uh, you know, you had to have the staff to uh, uh, handle those calls for a reservation. So, you know, we've come so far in how we interact with restaurants and with retail. I mean, Mario, I think to my beloved farmers markets, and it's really nice weather in Alberta right now. So I think some of us are thinking of that. You know, back in the old days, you had to come with stacks of cash. Now, because of companies like Square, you've got debit and credit for even the smallest of merchant. But Square's moved so much past, um, you know, just being a payment provider to hardware and software and financial services. So they're this ecosystem now that supports businesses of all sizes. Boy, I wish when I started my business 20 years ago, I would have had that support. Um, because it just allows companies for a fraction of what they would have to outlay on their own to access this innovation, to access this automation and AI. I mean, I think, Mario, and I'm sure a lot of your viewers would agree, just to like 10, 15 years ago, if you tried to get merchant services on your own, you had to have a pristine credit report. You're like, it was very difficult to offer these services to your customer. That's why you would see a lot of mom and pop shops just saying cash only. Well, in today's society, you're not going to survive yeah. if you can't offer these options to your consumers. They're just going to move on to another store. So, okay. And and there are, uh, granted, there are a lot of benefits out there for, uh, for consumers. Uh, um, let me ask you on the other aspect of it, of how businesses deal with the, the negative parts of things. Um, and um, example... As myself recently, <laughs> I tried. I'm trying to book a place, uh, and it was like a spa type thing. But I, okay, I, you know, and these bots, and it drove me nuts. Absolutely mm. drove me crazy because 
they didn't, you know, with an automated uh, responses, you, they couldn't mm -hmm. understand what I was seeking. And, and there was nobody at the other end of the phone to pick up yeah. the phone, or nobody mm -hmm. to pick up the email. You know, what's the danger in all this that we get to those types of situations and businesses have to deal with that? The customers are, you know, throw up their hands. Yeah, I mean, I've been exactly there too. Um, and it was a spa reservation for myself as well, Mario, where I couldn't cancel it and I couldn't get a hold of anyone. I thought I was going to be charged yep. for not showing up. And I just was like, I can't even get a hold of anyone on the phone. I think too, you know, dare I say again, when you're part of a larger ecosystem like Square that has all of these mechanisms in place, you don't have that. I mean, part of the the challenge for a business to navigate this on your own is do you have the 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 means and the infrastructure and the investment dollars to upgrade your website to be able to handle that, to not just have a bot, but actually have something that does something for you, not just point you to an article so you're <laughs> not screaming uh, at the computer. Um, so, you know, I think it just underscores that businesses need to research all of the options that are out there for them, not just take the default of, you know, hey, this is just uh, good enough because you're right. I mean, we want to make every experience more seamless and 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 quick for the consumer but not you know a, a deleterious experience where the consumer is so frustrated that they don't go back to your business so definitely researching what's out, out there making sure that you have the best technology you have the best support that you can um because yeah it's uh it's it's a great experience when it works um but we know it's not fun when it doesn't and how how do businesses juggle, I guess, the line between, you know, going too much on the automation and losing that personal touch? Uh, yeah. You know, uh, you see, you're seeing today, especially in retail, everybody talks about the customer experience that they 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 love to be in store again. And they love the contact with people, you know. Certain brands. I just did an interview with Lee Valley, which was one oh, yeah. uh, that was uh, number one in Ontario with the Wow Study for brand, you know, experience for the in-store experience. So how how do businesses navigate that between going that automation AI route, technology route, and yet trying to keep that personal touch? Well, I think you touch on something very important, exactly that. When technology and automation is done well, when your back end is working well, when you're able to address staffing issues with technology and automation, whatever that might be, if it's reservations, if it's uh, robot uh, chefs, if it, whatever we're seeing now and in the future, uh, or even if it's you know self-serve kiosks at a store, if it's predictive consumer behavior, giving you ideas of, of what it is that you might buy, it, it frees up restaurants and retailers to now spend more time innovating. So for example, oh, the Square Report also showed that 19% of restaurants, I found this really surprising, Mario, already receive revenue from what's called non-core items and, 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 and innovation. So what does that mean? It could mean meal kit services. It could mean virtual experiences, partnerships, getting more into the community. So already 19% of restaurants are receiving revenue from that. Imagine if you could automate more, how much more experience and enjoyment and fun could you create for your, your consumers and therefore your bottom line as well as a, as a business. So I think when it's done well, again, when you're part of a larger ecosystem that um, has worked out all of those kinks for you, it, you just know that you've got that assurance to go and meet and greet customers to, um, you know, create more, um, you know, experiences and things of that sort. Okay. We've all experienced, obviously, yeah, in this day and age, we've all experienced the, you know, some of the automation and when it comes to uh, communication more than anything. Right. right. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, Yourself, like what? What's the, the I'm going to say weirdest, but the the the, the most unique thing that you've experienced uh, uh, with technology that these companies or businesses are using? Yeah, have, have you had a robot deliver a drink to you? Or you know what? <laughs> not yet, Mario. Something <laughs> I mean, maybe not unique, but something I've become very accustomed to is predictive buying. 
Like, I have to tell you, when I go into a store, for example, like a bookstore, I'm like, well, what am I supposed to buy? I don't know. <laughs> like, we've become so accustomed to Netflix telling us what to watch and Amazon telling us what to read and what else we could buy. You know, seeing more businesses that are able to scale with those types of predictive, um, you know, recommendations, that just makes me feel much more understood, maybe lazy, <laughs> that's okay, okay, as a buyer. Now, one that actually is in Edmonton, I'm in Edmonton right now, I have not yet ventured out to go and find this uh, business, but apparently it's a grocery store or a convenience store that is 100% um, uh, it, it, human free as far as you know, entry, buying your products and services, putting them in your basket. I'm not sure how it's working out, but I think it's super cool. I know some people love the self-serve kiosks, others don't. Uh, but the Square Report as well is pointing to an overwhelming number of consumers that are in favor of more and more automation and AI, be it self-serve kiosks or what have you, right? Anything that can help them feel um, to, you know, that they're saving time or saving money or what have you, or supporting the business. That's very important to consumers as well. But to your point that it's done in, you know, a framework and an ecosystem that's not deleterious to that experience of, oh, it was frustrating because it just didn't make sense. Or there was these barriers to getting what I wanted to get done. What do you say to um, the mom and pop restaurant that, you know, owns the little Italian bistro down the street that uh, uh, what do you say to them about all this? Because they're worried about money. They're worried about, but, you know, uh, they don't have the money to invest. Uh, they don't have the time, et cetera. Uh, what's your advice to them? And Well, exactly that, Mario. I mean, if you go and buy these things individually or were to come up with them, or I'll give you, you know, like, there's just by being part of a larger ecosystem, you're going to get you're, you're you're spreading that investment of research dollars by hundreds, if not thousands of businesses um, and, and Square is worldwide. So by being able to tap into that, you're paying a fraction of the cost as opposed to innovating it yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just if it's financial services, if it's like payment processing, um, just to have that support behind you, I think is is really important. And to embrace it, because if you're not, as a business owner, if you're not really looking at what options exist, I'll give you also another example. You and I, I believe, spoke about this last year at this time um, when Square enabled Afterpay, which is the buy now, pay later onto their platform for their merchants. So let's say you're a chiropractor that's on the online merchant. You now can offer your, your patients buy now, pay later. A very innovative approach that would be incredibly difficult. I know a lot of small business owners, maybe they're a renovator, they're a home appliance, um, you know, a storefront, and they're working with the banks to try to come up with their own financing for their clients and haven't had a lot of success. Well, you're on a platform like that, you you have this type of option to extend to your, your clientele and your client base, making it more, you know, friendly and easy for them to shop. And, uh, you know, ideally increasing your sales and profit. So it's a win-win for both. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks very much, uh, Kelly, for joining us today. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Mario. All right. That was Kelly Keene, who is founder of Money Wise Workplaces. I'm Mario Taniguzzi, Senior News Editor with Retail Insider. Thanks for joining us today.